Hello my fellow book nerds, in this video I'm going to tell you guys how I choose a book and pretty much what I take into consideration because there's a few things that I do, there's actually five, that I do and what I look at to choose a book and pretty much these are the reasons why I choose a book. So let's jump right into it. But before that, please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notification bell down below so you can be notified whenever I upload some new book content. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing that I do is look at the title. For some reason, the title is always... What's the thing that grabs me the first? It, like, okay, um, let me show you one book. With this book, the title grabbed me right away because... I kind of already had like feelings towards this already, but Moriarty, just that name has like a ton of significance to me because I love, love Sherlock Holmes and I read Moriarty and I'm like, did they write a book about Moriarty? Like I just had to read it. So that's pretty much the only reason why I got this book was because of the name Moriarty. If it wasn't for the title, if it was someone else, if it had another name, like a detective name or something, I probably wouldn't have picked it up. But since it was Moriarty, and it literally is about Moriarty, it is really good. And it's not even about, it's not even written by the um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, it's by, who is it, Anthony Harowitz? But he still did a really good job, and I love this book. But my point is, the title is the first thing that caught my eye. So if the title is good, I would more than likely pick it up. And... Well, it has to be kind of personal. Moriarty is one. There's another one that I will show you guys in a bit that also the title caught my eye. But that's the first thing I look at, the title. Another thing that I look at with books, I tend to trust the author, the writer. Like I believe, I know and I trust this author to tell me a good story. So there are specific authors that I love. And I believe I did a video on authors that I loved. I don't remember. But one of them was... Neil Gaiman. I love Neil Gaiman. I think some of his books are amazing. The Graveyard book is such a good book and there's so obviously a lot more but whenever I see his name I tend to like trust it and be like okay I know he tells good stories so I will more than likely buy this book. Now Good Omens the title sounds interesting. It could be interesting and I mean just the photo makes me laugh. So possibly a good reason to pick up the book. Besides that, I don't know. But just because it has his name is the reason I picked it up. Number three is, you know when you're like scrolling through like Instagram or Pinterest or something and you see a book and you just, it kind of like looks intriguing so you read the summary. That is usually the thing that gets me into a new book or a new author. If the book summary catches me, that catches my interest, then definitely I will read it. The book thing. I would say the title caught my attention right away because it has book and then a thief. I mean, book thief, that sounds cool. But my point is, I read the summary. Though, don't you guys hate it that in the back now, books don't have like the summary. They have like, who cares what other people think? Like re they have these weird reviews like who cares what i don't really care what the new york times says or all these people i care about the book summary and that's what helps me choose if i want to read this book or not so that is what i read to figure out if i'm going to choose this book the book summary for this one was very well written and i love that like the first pages it starts off from the perspective of death so that the book summary and like the first pages those if they capture me right away I'm hooked and I will buy the book. If not, then they're kind of lame or I think that like, oh, I felt like that, like that story's been told already so many times and I'm not interested. There's a lot of things like that. Then I won't, I won't buy the book. And I've done that a decent amount of times where I'm just like, this, I can't even remember the books, but I read the summary and I'm just turned off. I don't really care. They don't make me care for the the character in any form and I'm guessing it's hard to write book, sum book summaries because of that reason specifically you're trying to capture the attention of the reader in a few paragraphs and sometimes that is not easy at all the next thing that is very important for me when I choose a book is recommendations if someone that I trust a friend a family member 
a person on the internet that I trust that recommends a book, then I will right away, well not right away, but I will consider buying the book. And one that was like that was The Martian. This book was recommended to me by, I believe it was a friend, or maybe I saw it on the internet. I think someone on the internet, it wasn't a friend, it was, I, I believe someone on the internet that I follow and they said they recommended The Martian. And I was like, it's probably another sci-fi book. I wasn't interested in much, but because they recommended it, I decided to purchase it and read it. And I was severely grateful that I did because they were correct. It is an amazing, funny book that you has you like, hoping and wanting to finish reading it so this was a very very good recommendation for my from that person that i found on instagram i don't remember who it was i wish i could tell you i complete it's been a long time since i read this book i can't remember that but i remember it was recommended so because it was recommended i picked up the book and that is actually very important when you know if it's recommended you pick it up especially if it's someone you trust so this one's kind of cliche and that's kind of funny to me but the book cover if the book cover could get my attention at least a look at the book and like consider like opening it and reading the summary or something but the first book that i was really interested in the book cover is what got my attention and that was a lawn boy this cute adorable book by gary paulson the only reason I picked up this book was because of the cover. It had money on it, it had this weird kid on it, on... He, t he looks metallic to me, and or maybe like clay, and then he's on a little... What's that called? Lawnmower? A lawnmower. And I was like, okay, it's short, and the, c the cover looks interesting, so I thought, why not? And I picked it up, and I read it, and then from then on, I've been like the biggest book fan ever. So, the cover is very important. Though to me, not that much. Like, you know how they say, don't judge a book by its cover. It is true, because there's a lot of books that have completely awful covers and boring. And I'm fine with it, and I think the books are great. But I think they do hold a sense of importance. So, that is why I say at least the book cover does matter. I mean, even like in bookstores, they put the books that are like important, they put, they put them like this so you can see the cover and the title and the writer. Come on. They want you to judge the book by its cover. I'm just saying, it's important. But anyway, thank you for watching. Um, let me know how you choose your books. If these five things, I will normally choose a book. If they're like on par, then I'll choose a book. Except the last one, I'm just saying the cover doesn't matter that much. But everything else does matter to me and they help me choose the book. So let me know down below how you choose the book and pretty much what book did you pick up that you did not believe you, that was not recommended to you, that was not, this book summary was an awful or something. And oh, I don't know, know if I have one like that where everything was pretty much awful but I still read the book and it was good. I can't think of one right now. I had to think about it. But anyway, let me know down below and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.